Hey everyone, greetings. This is Patrick Higgins. I hope this finds each of you well. You know, as we celebrate what I believe to be the single greatest event to transpire in all of human history, of course I'm referring to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there's something I need to share with you that's been heavy on my heart the past couple of months, if not the past couple of years. Getting to the point, I'm referring to the many evils of racism in our world today. Now, before I delve into my short message, I need to say that racism isn't a one-way street, as many might have you think. In truth, racism rears its ugly head in all cultures and in all ethnicities. None are excluded from this grim equation. In Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31, these are passages I'm sure you're very familiar with. Jesus commanded us to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, all our soul, all our minds, and with all our strength. This, he said, was the first commandment. The second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Messiah said, no other commandments are greater than these two. Hmm. Love thy neighbor. What does this mean to you? Did you notice Jesus didn't say, love thy next door neighbor only, or love thy black or white neighbor only? He simply said, love thy neighbor. Who is thy neighbor? And personally, I believe it's anyone not living under your roof, and therefore anyone with whom you come in contact with on any given day, regardless of who they are, what they look like, what they choose to believe, or the color of their skin. When Jesus freely shed his blood on the cross, I can assure you, not for one second did he ever stop to consider the color of the skin of the person for whom he was willing to die. All that mattered was that, that, all that, mattered was that they believed in him and followed him. Being black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Indian, or any other ethnicity was never part of the equation, at least not in heaven. But here on earth, in Satan's domain, I might add, racism continues to run rampant throughout the world. Worse, many who proclaim to be Christ followers are just as caught up in this nonsense as everyone else. Talk about an oxymoron. Listen up, if you're a brother, if you're a true brother or sister of, of mine in Jesus Christ, this nonsense must stop. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus was despised and rejected for all skin colors. He was stricken by God and afflicted for all skin colors. He was wounded for the transgressions of all skin colors. He was bruised for the iniquity of all skin colors. In short, he poured out his soul unto death for all skin colors. Bottom line, race didn't matter to Jesus one bit. All that mattered to him was that we believe on him and receive him as Lord and Savior. Nothing more. So I need to ask, if skin color matters not to God, after all, we are the way we are because he chose to make us this way. Why then does it matter so much to us? Satan's running rampant in the world, that's why. Instead of loving thy neighbor, there's a spirit of anger, distrust, and hatred in the world that none of us can ignore. Most people seem so vengeful these days. It's as if they lie in wait, waiting for someone to make a mistake so they can pounce. This spirit, which certainly doesn't come from God, is slowly creeping into every crevice of society. None are spared. Sadly, the impact it's having on our children is nothing short of horrific. It's devastating, guys. Devastating. Satan has society right where he wants us. Never forget that he is the thief of souls. He is the great deceiver and a liar. He is also a divider of people. Hmm. With that in mind, <clears throat> to all who are watching who proclaim to be children of the Most High God, if you have hatred in your heart for another person based solely on the color of their skin, Satan has you right where he wants you. Never forget that. Over the past couple of years, I've come to believe that the greatest mission field for the church today is the church itself. I guess you could say not everyone seated next to you in church on Sunday or whatever day you choose to worship are your co-laborers. The point to consider is this. Just because someone, can, someone attends church on a weekly basis, this doesn't necessarily make them a true follower of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 7, chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, to paraphrase what Jesus said, he said, on that day, many, not some, not few, many. And these are people who think they're going to heaven. Many will say, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name. We did that in your name. And he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Frightening thoughts indeed. 
man, oh man. With these sobering words still ringing in your ears, let me remind you that as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we can never and should never expect equality with the world. In the grand scheme of things, though Satan would have you believe otherwise, this has nothing to do with the color of your skin and everything to do with the spirit within you. That's where the tr real true war is being waged. The soul of man, the spirit within us, the spirit that is hated by the world. Jesus said, if the world hated you, expect it because it hated me first and persecuted me first. Never forget that as, dwell, as temporary earth dwellers, we must rise above the anger and the hatred. And instead of trying to win the race war, we must remain focused on the soul war. That's where eternity is at stake, heaven and hell. This is serious stuff. We need to rise above the nonsense and remain focused. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the question begs, where is your heart? Is it rooted in the evils of this world? Or is it rooted in heaven? I think it's a fair question to ponder. As we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, I pray that Yahweh God will expose our true hearts and pluck out all the nasty weeds of sin and hatred from within us so we can focus more on why we're here in the first place, to win souls for the kingdom. Skin color should never come into the equation. So let me close by saying this. If I have an issue with the color of your skin, is my issue really with you? I think not. My issue is with God. Hmm. On the other hand, if you have an issue with the color of my skin, your issue is also with God and not with me. After all, once again, we are the way we are because he chose to create us this way. You know what I mean? Since Jesus died for all who would believe in him, despite who we are, what we look like, the color of our skin, and the many countless sins we've committed against him, the least we could do is get along with each other. Well, I want you to know that I intend to do my part. My hope is that you will join me. Grace and peace, y'all. This is Patrick Higgins. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Peace.